This is Candle Talk. Thank you for tuning in. Let's get right into the show. But before we get into the show, don't forget to check out our website, sylviaexpress.com. Hey, fabulous people. Okay. Sorry, but I have had the flu and I've been so sick. But there was no way, and I'm still sick, but there was no way I was not going to do a show after finding out about the Mueller indictment. I mean, there's no way I was not going to say anything. And I think it's imperative that anybody who has been speaking out on this stuff, who understands kind of what's transpiring, that they get out there and say something. Because I think that there's a misconception out there that this wasn't like a bomb that just dropped. And let me just be abundantly clear for those of the people who are sitting there trying to figure out what does this really mean and how does this affect Trump, etc. I'm going to go through that in this show. But nevertheless, I'm going to say this. You know, this is horrific news for Trump, what just happened. And, and I'm not saying that, I'm not being hyperbolic. I'm not saying that because I'm somebody who despises Trump. I'm not saying that because I'm just trying to spew some kind of meaningless rhetoric that sounds fanciful and it's going to be exciting, et cetera. I'm not saying any of that for that reason. I'm saying that as an attorney and I'm telling you, this is a horrible situation for Trump. Now I'm going to play a clip real quickly that explains kind of what transpired, what just happened with Mueller, et cetera. And then I'm going to explain to you how this affects Trump and why we should actually all care about it. So let me play the clip first and then I'll be right back. Special counsel Robert Mueller laid out the most detailed allegations yet of Russian interference in the U.S. election. The 37-page indictment says the Russians, beginning in 2014, used fake social media posts and advertisements to sway opinion in favor of then-candidate Donald Trump. The defendants allegedly conducted what they called information warfare against the United States with the stated goal of spreading distrust towards the candidates and the political system in general. Twelve of the defendants worked for the Internet Research Agency, a Russia-based company that carries out influence operations on behalf of Moscow. The defendants were charged with eight criminal counts, including attempts to defraud the U.S., conspiracy to commit fraud, and identity theft. But the indictment does not accuse Trump campaign officials of participating in the scheme. There is no allegation in this indictment that any American was a knowing participant in this illegal activity. There is no allegation in the indictment that the charged conduct altered the outcome of the 2016 election. Trump has called the Russia investigation a hoax and a witch hunt led by his political opponents. He's also repeatedly rejected or downplayed accusations that Russia interfered in the election. Bill Gallo, BOA News, Washington. Okay, so as you can hear from there, sorry about that, as you can hear <clears throat> from this clip from VOA, is that basically what happened is that Mueller basically indicted 13 Russian nationals and um, corporations basically for interfering in the United States elections. He accused them of defrauding the United States, um, conspiracy to defraud the United States, wire fraud, mail fraud, I believe it was in the indictment. I read the entire indictment. Um, it's like 37 pages. You should try to read it. I'm going to put a link to it here so that um, anybody who wants to read the indictment can actually read the indictment. <coughs> Excuse me. But the indictment basically charges those Russian nationals um, with basically interfering in the United States um, election. And they did it through spending money, um, creating false um, rallies. They even created fake American accounts, created American personas. They were paying Americans off. I mean, this in- if you read this indictment, it is really damning. Very, very damning. But let's get to the real issue, here, but this particular issue here, which is where they're trying to say that this does not affect the imposter in the White House. And this is the thing. That's patently, patently false. And there's a multitude of reasons why Mueller did exactly what he did. Now, you can say, OK, well, look, these indictments will never be brought to fruition. There will never be any conclusion because these are Russian nationals. There is no extradition treaty between the United States and Russia. So these people are never going to have to face trial. But that wasn't the purpose of Mueller doing that. And that's what I want to make sure it's abundantly clear for everybody. The first thing is that if you were one of the Trump sickle fans, you were alleging that this was all a hoax and that it was a witch hunt and that it was never going to conclude anything and nothing was, it wasn't fruitful. Unfortunately for you today, you can no longer argue that. That has been completely dismantled by these indictments. That's number one. You can't argue that it's a hoax, it's a witch hunt anymore. Number two. Do you recall that there was going to be an obstruction of justice claim that's allegedly being investigated against the imposter in the White House? Part of what the defense was for the imposter in the White House is that he can't obstruct a particular investigation if there is no real investigation. 
If no real investigation exists, then he couldn't have obstructed justice. That was part of the argument by the sickle fence, even though even I and other lawyers understood that that was such a ridiculous argument in the first place. Because at the end of the day, even if the underlying investigation is fruitless, the fact that you interfered in an, an investigation and tried to impede that investigation knowingly did this, that is considered obstruction of justice. But nevertheless, part of what the argument was, was that he couldn't have obstructed justice because the underlying investigation was frivolous. That is now killed. That has been destroyed. That has been completely dismantled because the underlying investigation actually led to indictments. So there is a legitimate Russia investigation. Another problem that the imposter in the White House has right now is that he's likely going to get an obstruction of justice claim brought against him because of this. Because now you can no longer argue, like I said before, you can no longer argue that there isn't any underlying claim. There is an underlying claim, and clearly there was enough because a grand jury indicted 13 people. Okay. Then another thing that's really, really bad for Trump right now is, that, is the fact that he cannot fire Rosenstein or Mueller. It's too late. See, had he had taken the action that he should have taken a long time ago, which was fire them when he had an opportunity, when the story was hot and when Democrats were about to release this memo that I thought that they shouldn't do, and I'm glad it's never been released. And when those things were happening, you should have taken advantage of that right then and there and fired Rosenstein. The problem is now, if you fire Rosenstein after they've just secured 13 indictments, you look called bull's hell. And you're going to have a very difficult time. You're going to get impeached. So you can't fire Rosenstein. You definitely can't fire Mueller. Because we all know it was Mueller who secured those 13 indictments, even though Rosenstein is over the investigation. So the reason why, and then another thing too, let me make it abundantly clear for all those people who keep on trying to muddy the, the, the waters and try to make, create this illusion that this, is, this has nothing to do with Trump. It doesn't show any collusion, etc. That is such a blatant lie. The truth is, this is one indictment, and they made it abundantly clear, this indictment. OK, if you notice in this particular indictment, if you ever read this indictment, you'll realize that Michael Flynn is not included in there. George Papandopoulos is not included in there. Allegedly, Gates is now flipping to he's not included in that indictment. So what about all the information that they're providing to Mueller? How does that add to this indictment? It doesn't because there are going to be multiple other indictments coming. That's why. This is just one piece of the Russia, Russia case, one piece of the Russia investigation. It's not cumulative. It's not the entire investigation. It's not the totality of things that Mueller knows. This is just one part of the investigation that they solidified, which now helps them build up everything else. Because the one thing that's in there is they're saying there were American citizens who were complicit in this, which is one thing that they've been saying abundantly clear that American citizens were complicit in is in the indictment, but that they were unwittingly complicit, essentially. Um, but that there are also people knowingly and unknowingly who participated in this. The knowingly ones are the ones we don't even know who those people are yet. So for anybody to act like this is a conclusive and cumulative indictment is just being completely ridiculously disingenuous. The truth is Mueller is now so much closer to being capable of indicting people closer to Trump than he ever was before. Flynn, Papandopoulos, none of them gave him this right here. None of them were capable of providing him with this kind of great situation. None of them were. This was through the dogged work of Mueller and, and his investigators that they were able to come up with these indictments. And now it puts Trump in a very difficult situation because the imposter in the White House now is required to do something about what just happened with Russia. They detailed now an explicit and elaborate plan by the Russian government and by Russian operatives to undermine and they conspired to defraud the United States, undermine our U.S. election, violate our campaign finance laws, violate our laws, came in here, fake visas, et cetera, to come in here, to be able to come in here. He did that. Now the imposter in the White House is in a dilemma. See, because they were supposed to implement the Russian sanctions that the overwhelming Congress voted for. They were supposed to implement those January 29th. Trump decided he wasn't going to implement those Russian sanctions. Okay. Subsequently, here come 13 indictments. Trump still hasn't implemented those Russian sanctions. Okay, he hasn't done anything actually at all and said nothing at all about what transpired. He's been the biggest coward ever to exist. And the reason why he's a coward is let's just be honest here. There's no point in sugarcoating anymore. He's culpable. He is just culpable. He is a co-conspirator. He's a traitor. He knows what he did. And Mueller knows what he did. But nevertheless, he has done nothing about these Russian situations. So now he's in a bind. You can continue to pretend as though Russia never interfered in the United States election. There's no proof. And Putin told me he didn't do it. So I believe Putin. You can continue to do that. 
And then you're going to look like a traitor. You're going to look like you're, you're culpable. And even your own base is going to start to question you because your base now is starting to ask questions and saying, <clears throat> well, what are we going to do about what Russia did? Okay. If he implements sanctions against Russia, you think Russia's not going to retaliate against Trump? Do you think the reason why he was never implementing these things is because him and Putin are just such good friends and, you know, he, he just felt like doing the right thing by his friend? No, the reason why he wasn't implementing these things is because he's afraid to implement them because he knows that Putin has too much on him. So if he implements this now, which he, he may just do because he's going to be pushed into a corner to have to do it, he implements those sanctions. Do you think there's not going to be retaliation from Russia? And then a lot more is going to start to come out. Miraculously, evidence is going to start to come out. That is a problem for Trump. So this Mueller indictments, these indictments by Mueller are catastrophic. In my opinion, this is the worst thing that's happened to him since this whole thing has started. These indictments are the worst. Every, th- every single narrative he had has got destroyed by Mueller with one literally set of indictments. And let me tell you something. Mueller is the best lawyer you have ever heard of and the best lawyer you've ever seen. Nobody knew what was coming. He has blindsided every single person. He has outmaneuvered every single person. Trump's lawyers, Trump's sycophants, Trump's elite um, uh, loyalists, none of them were prepared for what Mueller did. What Mueller did this Friday by indicting 13 Russians, none of us can say we were ready for that. We weren't prepared. We didn't know because Mueller is that much of a badass. So if you think he was capable of doing that and keeping that completely secret, Just imagine what he knows about Trump. I am telling you guys right now, you can mark it on the calendar. I've said it before. Trump will not last the entire term. He will either be impeached, they'll invoke the 25th Amendment, or he'll resign. And it's looking more and more like that now that Mueller has secured some indictments. Because now, nobody can do anything to stop Mueller now. Mueller is going to, Mueller is about to be the biggest train wreck Trump has ever seen. And you just mark it that I said that. Another thing, Donald Trump Jr., is looking like he's in a lot of trouble too. Because part of what has been discovered through what Mueller what Mueller had basically um, did was he also outlined the law that he was using in order to bring forth these claims against um, you know Trump and them. He outlined the law, and basically this is what he said that helps us understand exactly the kind of law that he's using um, and where he's going legally. Um, and he said, from in and around 2014 to present, defendants knowingly and intentionally conspired with each other and with persons known and unknown to the grand jury to defraud the United States by impairing, obstructing, and defeating the lawful functions of the government through fraud and deceit for the purpose of interfering with the U.S. political and electoral processes, including the presidential election of 2016. So basically, he's focusing on defrauding the United States of America, conspiracy to defraud. Another thing that he's focusing on are campaign finance laws. The violation of campaign finance laws, which essentially means a United States citizen or an American citizen cannot, basically a campaign uh, candidate, cannot basically receive anything of value from a foreign national who basically hasn't registered with the United States and, and disclosed that information, etc., to the United States. You cannot receive anything of value. When Donald Trump Jr. received WikiLeaks, stolen documents of Hillary Clinton from WikiLeaks, when they wrote Donald Trump Jr., WikiLeaks, a foreign entity, wrote Donald Trump Jr. and said, we have these documents, these stolen documents that we could basically help you. And they didn't say stolen, obviously, but we had these emails. They gave them to Donald Trump Jr. in an email. That's of value. Those were of value, very, very valuable. Those WikiLeaks, nobody can deny that those WikiLeaks emails helped to hurt Hillary Clinton, which means that they helped Donald Trump. That's value. So when they gave Donald Trump Jr. those WikiLeaks documents and he weaponized them tweeted them out sent them out to the general public and then the general public started to disperse those documents he received something of value from a foreign entity he wasn't allowed to ladies and gentlemen and that's what Mueller is also bringing up in these indictments is that if you violate a campaign finance laws you better watch your ass because you're in a lot of trouble so I think Donald Trump Jr. might be the next one that's going to go down in burning flames another person Steve Bannon. See, let me tell you something about Steve Bannon. I told you guys before that he was going to cooperate with Mueller. I told you guys he was going to cooperate and not to listen to the mainstream media. Now, you will hear the Congress and basically um, these uh, committees saying he's not cooperating. He's refusing to cooperate. He's not cooperating because he's cooperating with Mueller. Hello? He's not going to disclose to the, the committee what can become public when he's decided to cooperate with Mueller. It's been alleged that he met with Mueller. I'm going to play this clip real quickly that tells you a little bit about what transpired. Here it is. 
New information on special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation into possible Russian collusion with the Trump campaign. Former White House strategist Steve Bannon meeting with Mueller's team for more than 20 hours this week. Bannon also appearing before a congressional panel, but lawmakers found him uncooperative. Frustrated Democrats slamming that appearance, saying Bannon should be held in contempt for refusing to answer questions. Okay, so Bannon is basically refusing to answer questions with the Congressional Committee because he is cooperating with Robert Mueller. There's no logical reason for him to give any information to the committee, knowing that information is going to go public. Knowing that that information is going, um, is, is, it would hurt his chances or whatever, his cooperation or whatever with Mueller. He's cooperating with Mueller. He's not going to give Donald Trump or anybody else any ammunition that they can use to try to turn his words against him or try to defeat whatever it is that he's doing. So the thing is, if he goes out there and he says, look, Donald Trump, I am confident that he committed treason. You think that Donald Trump, if that goes to the committee, the committee is going to come out to the public because all those people just love public attention. They're not really doing anything to, to curtail these problems. They just want to have these committees and act like they're doing stuff. It took Mueller to finally do something. So anyway, nevertheless, they... You know, they, um, Bannon would be a fool to go out right now and, and, and work with the committee. That doesn't make any sense. You know, that's going to get out to the public. Donald Trump's going to be able to counteract it. And then you're going to be less, you're going to be able to do less damage to him than, than Bannon does want to do. It's evident that Bannon's trying to do damage. That's why he's cooperating with Mueller. He gave over 20 hours. There's no way you're sitting there for 20 hours saying absolutely nothing to Mueller and obstructing Mueller. There's no way you're doing that. Mueller won't let you do it. Mueller's not the congressional committee that has no balls, okay? Mueller's not the congressional committee that has no backbone. Mueller's the type of guy who say, really? Okay. You're done. I'm going to ask, I'm, I'm coming after you with a vengeance. He's not going to be the guy who doesn't answer questions for Mueller. He just isn't. So he's cooperating now too. So the truth is right now, and I've been saying this for a long time, the Trump administration is in so much shit, you guys. This is problematic for him. No matter what, things are falling apart all around him. Losing Bannon and getting Bannon to testify, somebody who was intricate in your entire campaign, so was intricate as when in the White House, is a, one of the worst things that could happen to you. And we know he's cooperating because he gave 20 hours of testimony to Robert Mueller. Then you have Mueller coming forth with these indictments. Those have nothing to do with what Bannon said, have nothing to do with what Flynn said, had nothing to do with what Pop, Papandopoulos has said. Has nothing to do with what Gates is saying now that he's also flipped. So the thing is, you know that more and more things are definitely going to be coming. If you're Trump, this is a nightmare. This is an absolute nightmare. It's a train wreck. And let me just say something before I take a break, because when I come back to the break, I want to talk about Parkland. But let me just say something before I take a break. The reality of the situation is that there's nothing Trump can do anymore to, to argue that he's not complicit somehow. He failed to implement the sanctions. He pretended as if his whole thing was a hoax. He acted as if those 17 intelligence agencies who had said that Russia had interfered were all lying. He did nothing to def defend the United States of America. That's problematic. Another issue is the legitimacy of his presidency. Now, they can say here that it didn't affect the outcome of the election, which I don't know how they could possibly say that. So you actually went into people's minds and said, did these things that they put out there, did it affect the way you viewed you know, the election? You could never really determine that. It's going to be very, very difficult to determine that. But I think we all can rationally speak, rationally say that some minds were changed by the stuff that they heard. Some people didn't vote for Hillary Clinton because of the propaganda and the stuff that the Russians did. To sit here and pretend like that's just completely a preposterous is absurd. The truth is there, there has to be a question now as to the legitimacy of Trump's presidency. And if you're not at least asking that, then you're being dishonest. Because you cannot say now after all the stuff that's coming out, after everything we heard, that just this, these indictments, not to mention what they are, the other stuff that they probably already know. This is just these, this operation. There were many more operations that were working to destroy the United States. And what they wanted to do was instill Donald Trump, not because they wanted to help the United States, they wanted to hurt the United States. Just think about that. They wanted Trump to be the president because they thought he'd be worse for the United States. So the thing is, there's no one now that can question, that can't, that, that can say, that there isn't a question as to the legitimacy of his presidency. Did he win fair and square? No, he didn't. He didn't win fair and square. He didn't win like other presidents have won. He just didn't. And when you have him winning the Electoral College and losing the popular vote in the landslide, <clears throat> and winning some states by 10,000, 8,000, whatever 
it, it came down to like 75,000 votes that swayed the Electoral College, you have to ask yourself whether or not he's a legitimate president. And if I were Hillary Clinton, and I'm telling you, I'm not a Hillary Clinton supporter. Like, I mean, I voted for her, but I don't, I'm not somebody who really, you know, I'm not like enthusiastic or anything about her. But I will say this. If I'm Hillary Clinton, I could not endure what she's having to endure right now, knowing you got robbed. She got robbed, period. And whether you like her or you don't like her, you have to admit it. The process wasn't fair. So the question needs to become is, is Trump actually the president of the United States? I'm going to take a break. I'll be right back. fabulous people all right thanks for staying with us okay listen i said that you know the the last time i think it was the las vegas shooting massacre i don't even know why i'm calling it a shooter it was a massacre where we had 58 people because i'm not going to include the 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 mass murderer is one of the dead he as far as i'm concerned he doesn't deserve he was never human in the first place um but nevertheless i said after that time that i was going to be much more aggressive in terms of trying to combat this gun problem I failed. And I think we all did. But I failed, for sure. Parkland is so absolutely frustrating because it's so absolutely preventable. And see, some people are trying to make this argument the FBI was responsible and try to blame it on the FBI, which helps the Republican Party and helps these um, NRA-owned politicians from having to deal with the fact they failed the American public. Time and time and time again. And this time, they have failed children. We tell our kids. I tell my son all the time. Go to school. Get an education. Be a productive citizen. Education is the most important thing, et cetera, et cetera. Go to school, go to school, go to school. We send them to school so that what? They can go into a slaughterhouse? Those kids just went to school that day. They were just going there to get an education. Trying to better themselves. Walked into a slaughterhouse. Some of those kids literally had to walk over dead bodies. I saw it. I saw the videos. They're watching. They see their their teacher for over an hour. They're watching as their teacher's laying there dead. They have to stay there what, with a dead body right there. They watch their friends and people like that get their heads blown off. Enough is enough. And as a matter of fact, kids are starting to say, we've had enough of you adults. You don't know what you're doing. You've let us down so many times. And see, this is the problem. It's not just that the NRA donates money to them. The NRA owns these politicians. Owns them. There's no lobby that has more power than the NRA. Literally, people are dying. There's no greater, you know, hardship or horrific situation than murder. No greater one. And still they can't find the courage to do anything. That is how much they're owned by the NRA. Well, kids are fighting back. There was this girl today from Parkland. There was an anti-gun rally. This girl from Parkland who was a victim. Her name was Emma Gonzalez. She was part of the Parkland school. She went to school at the at the school where the shooting was. And listen to what she said. I'm going to play that. And after she's done, I want to comment. Here it is.
This young girl who has been trending all day on Twitter had more sense, intellect, sophistication than any and backbone and, 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 and spinal cord than all of Congress combined. If she can get up there as a kid who should not be as a kid having to navigate this because it's our job as adults to do this. It was our job to protect them. It was our job to keep these kids safe. But our children are going to have to tell us that it's time for us to stand up and do our job. And this girl, forever, all these kids are going to endure the scars and the pain of having to see dead bodies in their face, watching their classmates get killed, watching their teachers get killed, having to sit there for hours hearing gunshots after gunshots after gunshots, knowing people were getting murdered, knowing 17 people have been murdered. These kids are going to deal with that trauma forever, and we're going to remain silent? No, I won't be. I remained silent for too long. I said I was going to do a lot more, and I am going to do a lot more, because now this could be my child. See, today it's someone else's child. Tomorrow it's yours. Don't think it can't happen to you. People are getting killed. They are never coming back. So all the rhetoric that has been spewed out by Republicans and even some Democrats who are too cowardly to do anything about it, enough is enough. Vote them all out. They must go. Like she said, we call BS. Time for every single person, anyone, who is not willing to stand up right now and say, we need gun reform. We need to ban AR-15s. We do not need automatic assault rifles. Even GOP donors are saying, I'm not giving any more money to the GOP until they ban these assault weapons. Enough is enough. You need to call your Congress people. You need to vote. 2018 midterm election, there are a lot of issues on the table, but life is on the table. Get out and vote in the 2018 election. Vote against the Republican Party. I'll be right back. Okay, fabulous people. Thank you so much for staying tuned in to Candor Talk. Um, don't forget to check us out on sylviaexpress.com. Once again, that's sylviaexpress.com. Thank you guys so much for listening today, and keep on watching as the imposter of the White House goes down in burning flames, and I hope that I can do another show next week because I'm feeling a little bit better. So anyway, you guys have a great weekend, and I will see you guys soon. Take care.